Hi everybody, this is Beth. I'll be your mission commander for the Mission Lace series where we're making the lace top in the Manoso Uruguay Sabrina. And today I wanted to talk about swatching in the round. Because this top is knit in the round, to get the most accurate measure of your gauge, you're gonna wanna go ahead and swatch in the round as well. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a speed in the round swatch where we're kind of cheating to get the in the round effect. Um, the difference between working this in the round and working this back and forth is when you're working back and forth in stockinette stitch, you're knitting and then you're purling. Whereas when we're working stockinette stitch in the round, we're only knitting because most of us have some kind of tension difference between our knits and our purls. Traditionally, our purls might be a little bit looser. Uh, this can affect our stockinette gauge when worked flat and then transferring to an in the round piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I swatch for in the round pieces to get the most accurate measure of my gauge. So I've cast on my stitches. I've cast on enough to make about a six inch swatch and I've gone ahead and knit just a little bit of it. So as you can see, my yarn is at the back here and I'm going to bring it around the back, leaving a loose loop hanging in the back. And so that simulates working in the round, but instead of working all those stitches on the back, I'm just bringing the yarn across the back of the swatch. So then I'm gonna go ahead and leaving a nice loose loop in the back, I'm gonna go ahead and knit just as I normally would be doing if I was working in the round. I'm gonna go ahead and knit to the end of this row. When you're working your in the round swatch, you are gonna be working on circular needles. So you can simulate that in the round experience. And these should be the needles that you're planning on using for the project as well, because some of us can have gauge differences when we use wood needles versus metal needles. And this will help us get the most accurate gauge for our projects so that we can set ourselves up for project success. So I've gone ahead, I've reached the end of the row and instead of flipping it and working back and forth, I'm gonna go ahead and slide my whole swatch along the circular needles back to the other end. And then I'm once again going to go ahead and bring that yarn across the back of the swatch and ready to start knitting again. So this way my gauge swatch is worked entirely with knit stitches. The back of your swatch is gonna look like this. So you're gonna have these loops of yarn. You wanna keep those pretty loose if possible to help you when you come time to measure them. Um, so you're gonna have these across the back of your swatch each time. So you're gonna continue working your swatch in this fashion. So again, you're gonna bring your yarn around the back of your knitting, keeping it loose. I like to kind of put my fingers back there and kind of hold it in place to keep it nice and loose. And then each time you can go ahead and just knit across your swatch. So this is going to be our way of swatching in the round for our in the round top. So I can go ahead then and just keep knitting across until my swatch is at its desired length. So once our swatch is at our desired length, we're gonna go ahead, bind off, and it's going to look like this because we're going to go ahead and we're gonna take our scissors along the back of our swatch. We're gonna go ahead and cut open these loops. This does mean that the swatch can't be unraveled and worked into your project, but um, in most cases, we should always ensure that we have enough yarn for swatching in general so that we don't have to reuse that swatch because it will have already been blocked and everything. So in this case, we're gonna make that swatch lay flat by going ahead and taking our scissors and cutting through these loops across the back. And then once we cut through all of them, like on this one, we're going to have a nice flat swatch that we can block. So we're gonna go ahead, this one has already been blocked and so we're going to go ahead, block it, let it dry, and now it's finally time to measure and count our gauge and adjust a needle size for the project as necessary. So these gauge rulers that we have in the shop are a really good way to go ahead and get an accurate measure of your gauge and also just to kind of see what you're doing. So you're gonna place it on your knitting. You're gonna count the V stitches across. That's gonna be your numbers of stitches across. And then you're gonna count your vertical stitches and that's gonna be the number of rows in your gauge swatch. And so if this is correct for the project, then you're all set, you're good to go. If your swatch, you have more stitches over four inches, then you're gonna go ahead and change your needle size. You're gonna need to go up a needle size because your swatch is too tight. If you have too few stitches, then you're gonna go ahead and need to go down a needle swatch because a needle gauge because your swatch is too loose. So that's how we're gonna swatch in the round for this project.